so the agenda, uh, some introduction of course, uh, some sources, uh, different sources of uh, different kinds. Uh, you have probably used some of them already. I will uh, guide you through some of the ones that I am using for harvesting some PowerShell scripts. And then we come to the uh, jewels. And uh, of course there are uh, a lot more jewels. My name is Niklas Akerlund. Uh, I'm a, a chief technical architect at uh, Realtime Services. Uh, we work at my company both with Azure, Microsoft Solutions and also quite a bit with VMware Solutions in uh, large automation projects. Uh, I'm an MVP in Hyper-V, uh, one of uh, about 40 people in the world that gets to know stuff about Hyper-V before everyone else. Uh, of course some certifications. I'm one of the co-founders for PowerShell User Group in Sweden. We didn't have one, there was a Scandinavian one, but uh, that kind of died. And uh, then I, together with three other guys, tried to start up um, the PowerShell User Group in Sweden. We have had some meetings with uh, Don Jones, have been at our meetings, and Scripting Wife and Scripting Guy have also been there. Uh, I blog a bit. Uh, of course, the screen is kind of distorted, so you don't see uh, everything, but uh, my blog address is there. I also blog at the PowerShell Task Force, and I tweet a bit also uh, about stuff. I will also uh, put the presentation deck on my blog, so you don't have to sit here and try to write all the URLs for all the jewels. That would be kind of funny to see all of you trying to write everything in a, a fast manner but I will after this session post it so you will find it there and then you can click on every link and, and find everything if you haven't found it by Google or Bing. So the different sources for scripts. Uh, I think every session that I have attended Yesterday and today have talked about GitHub. Agree? <laughs> it's like the uh, way of getting things nowadays, and uh, it has been for uh, developers for quite a while. Uh, it's maybe we we as an IT pro has found it now and, and start utilizing it. Maybe not kind of always the way it should be used, but actually that doesn't matter as long as you put it there. You learn how to use Git and GitHub and then you will start evolving in that. But if you get it up there, you can uh, get comments and people can start contributing and, and giving you uh, pointers and, and making clones and uh, <coughs> taking the repros and start making better stuff or, or contributing to your stuff. Uh, I think uh, was a session yesterday they're talking about the PowerShell gallery. It's evolving, but also with a security uh, issue maybe, because you can, if you are uh, authorized to put things on there, you can put anything, almost. Uh, posh code, anyone have uh, put things on posh code? One in here, uh, I haven't used it so much, uh, but it's, Relatively big, uh, of course, TechNet script galleries like the one of the biggest, as it's kind of the old where you found all the uh, Visual Basic uh, VB script stuff, and then you start evolving and getting the the PowerShell stuff. I think it's over uh, nine thousand scripts in in the TechNet script gallery, and as described by the PowerShell team, uh, uh, they will try to add functionality for you to take scripts from there to uh, Azure Automation. Some guys have not got the message of getting things up to GitHub and getting things into maybe the gallery or Postcode or TechNet Script Gallery and they use their blogs and that's kind of a 
harvesting stuff to find s their squids. Uh, one way is to use Twitter, of course, and you can find things with Twitter. Uh, how many of you in here are using Twitter? Is everyone using Twitter? Or almost everyone. Uh, that's great. And of course, as I described, sharing is caring. If you don't share it, someone else will. Uh, that's at least my uh, emphasis on when I'm trying to make stuff and find stuff that's either wrong or, or that doesn't work or that I want to make better or I made some stuff, I, I try to share it uh, so everyone else can uh, benefit from it. Uh, <clears throat> had ever, everyone been into GitHub or not everyone maybe I, I can uh, show a, a quick a quick way in here so here's the github uh, now I'm uh, logged on as myself up there so I have some uh, things that I'm watching but basically if you want to uh, find stuff here you can uh, write uh, Just as in like Google, you will find 5,962 repositories naming that they have a PowerShell in that. In code, you see 439,078. So you can find, if you start digging here and you, you can like uh, <coughs> add some complexity if you like uh, into Azure stuff, you. You see 855 code strings contain get Azure VM. So if you're sitting and, and writing a script or have a borrowed script from someone and you need to check some code, then this is a way to, to get into and find some other guys writing scripts. Uh, and of course, you uh, if you're not comfortable with GitHub or you have uh, not found anything in GitHub, then you can go to the uh, Technet script gallery. So you can search for basically anything. Uh, password. Or, uh, and there is a way to use the Technet script gallery from within PowerShell ESI. Have you used it? <coughs> Uh, uh, browser. And then I get the scripts that was in the page here, so you can uh, search here for uh, the different scripts like password. And if I uh, click on this, it should uh, return something. Uh, if they would have uh, described it, maybe. Uh, so I can see, and I can download the script. <coughs> And then, of course, I would, uh, when I'm editing everything, I would put it up at GitHub instead. That's another way of uh, using stuff. And have you uh, been to uh, your, uh, the automation guy from Azure Automation? You can see, uh, uh, let's see where do we have PowerShell Gallery. Uh, so I think this will become available to uh, other ones if you try to register. You will have to uh, sign in as a Microsoft account. Uh, and they will uh, check that. Uh, 
who you are, at least they did for me. Uh, and basically now there's quite a few modules, but if you like search, take password as a good example. Password generator. So you can see how uh, I can deploy it to Azure Automation from within this gallery. Uh, otherwise, I could use the uh, Windows Management Framework 5 and the Find module and Install module. Uh, if I go into, take like run as administrator. Bom, bom, bom. Let's see if it's responding. One, two, one, two. It's kind of, maybe it's the chef that stops the machine. Hello. No, it's a, a lobster uh, thing. This is a feature if you ask someone. Okay. Let's see if I can use another window, maybe. That works. Find module. So, and I can also, of course, uh, go in and add other repositories. Now it goes out on, on the PowerShell gallery. So. Now I don't own a Tesla, but I might do that after I have uh, one on the lottery. And then I can uh, like find a uh, module Tesla. And I can check some uh, information about it, if there's uh, who has made it. And then of course I can uh, install that module. And now it says the PowerShell gallery is not available. the first time it's a demo, that's right. okay uh, well let's hope that doesn't uh, make any of the other demonstrations not working so good uh, we move on so the jewels based on my view and uh, just a uh, small sample of them. How many in here uh, runs a VMware or have customers running VMware? Probably uh, all of you. Have you used the VCheck before? Yeah. Have you ever seen the VCheck before? Uh, mm. I don't think that Mr. Brighton is in here, but he would uh, <laughs> have some uh, maybe thinking of, of the reporting, but Alan Renoff is a guy that uh, kind of uh, worked together with uh, Luke Deacons in the Power CLI area. And uh, he made this VCheck daily report. And uh, now he also put it on GitHub so you can contribute if you find things that you want to add to this report from just getting it as in this version you get so much information about uh, snapshots, about VMs dis uh, being uh, deleted, being added, who has done what, uh, configurations. It's a massive report and you can have it like daily or you can have it like uh, in a week or something. Uh, of course you could rewrite it with the P Scribo stuff if you want to, uh, if you have the time, but I think it's really great. Uh, to be able to get an, an overview of your VMware environment. And uh, that is uh, kind of a fast way to do it. 
also with uh, the new power here CLI version 6 they have started making uh, modules so it's easier to uh, use it in other ways and getting it into automation and other stuff. And uh, if you're going deeper into the VMware environment, they have something called the Unix. I used it quite a bit for a couple of years before uh, the Power CLI had so many commandlets that you could use so to be able to find the code, the powercli.net code, that's generated when you press different things in the GUI. You can record, there is a red record button over there. Uh, so you can record those steps and get the code and then you could utilize that to create your own script or workflow to uh, automate stuff. So that's also great stuff to be able to uh, automate beyond the commandlets. Instant cloning for you uh, in the DevOps thinking. Uh, Steven uh, from uh, Chef was talking yesterday, yesterday about getting things fast and uh, making clones of uh, environments and stuff and getting that DevOps thinking of, of deploying stuff and if you have like production systems and you want to test things then this could be a way of getting stuff really quick and this is a power CLI fling to me be able to use commandlets because there is no way in the GUI in the VMware client or the VMware web console to utilize this cloning th feature Moving on, how many in here has to work with Excel, making reports? Uh, Doug Finkel has made a uh, module for this. I think it's, uh, have, have anyone seen this, try this? It's really cool because as you can see on this, it can make both a pivot table and a graph. And you don't have to have Excel installed. Like you're doing it on a production system, you have to like document stuff in whatever mega system. You can utilize getting everything in uh, using PowerShell and uh, making that a, like a gigantic hash table of all the information that you want, and then you just pipe it into this and then you get the information and the graphs. Uh, I'll see if my PowerShell console will, will survive and then I would like to show. Uh, so in this really simple example, I just get processes, export to Excel, a worksheet, I name them and I like have a chart type uh, and uh, a pivot table. So it's Basically, super simple. Now it was a really simple uh, form of data, so, but if you have more, it takes a little bit longer time, but the, the functionality is great. So here is all the raw data, and uh, then you can see it. You can make it so and just send it to your boss instead of uh, having to make some manual. For instance, you have to send some report on, on utilization of the virtualization environment or your usage in Azure, for instance, if you're having an Azure environment and every week, okay, how much are we using in Azure? <coughs> oh, wait, I can show you. Here is the report. Now I'm going home. The convert Windows image. How many have used that one? I'm using it uh, quite often uh, when I'm setting up uh, new uh, Hyper-V environments and stuff. 
this uh, tool helps you creating images, uh, virtual disks for um, instance if you're having Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2016 or whatever, making those to, to have as a template for your uh, Hyper-V environment or your uh, client Hyper-V environment. Uh, you basically convert uh, an image into a an, uh, disk. It's actually used, if you have looked at the Windows Server 2016, the Technical <coughs> Preview 3, if you look in the Nano Server uh, section in the folder there, they have added the Convert Windows image there. And they, uh, when you utilize their Nano Server building, it uses the Convert Windows image underneath to create that nano server. Uh, you set what uh, kind of server version, you can set what kind of features you want on it, you can also add uh, updates, so if you have updates in a folder you can add those and put them into this, giving it a, a way of having an, an image that is always updated. So it's a really good one. It can uh, be used for both generation one and generation two VMs. But if you're going to use it on Azure, you should of course use the generation one, at least now. PowerShell deployment toolkit GUI. Have you heard about it? Maybe someone has. Have you used, as Snoover was talking about yesterday, about the uh, uh, PowerShell Deployment Toolkit? Uh, and this is basically a Hyper-V MVP and together with another guy that have made a GUI for setting that variables for that PowerShell Deployment Toolkit. Uh, so if you're going to deploy all the system center stack or just the sum of the system center stack and you're utilizing the PowerShell deployment toolkit then you can use this uh, GUI it's PowerShell underneath but it's uh, a way of uh, easier instead of uh, writing and, and trying to edit that that little file of, of uh, variables and once you have deployed everything with your PDT and stuff and you want to uh, configure, then you have the Windows Azure Pack tool uh, that another MVP from Belgium, no? Netherlands. Netherlands. Daryl yep. has made this. So the Windows Azure Pack tool helps you configure stuff. He didn't go the whole way with the GUI stuff. Uh, and that's not necessary, absolutely not. So it's a real great stuff to get the uh, configuration of your uh, Windows Azure Pack uh, installation. Anyone using System Center Configuration Manager? A few of you. Have you? Uh, looked at a former colleague of mine, uh, Nikolai. He has a blog uh, where he makes uh, quite a bit of uh, different PowerShell tools and help for the System Center configuration manual area. He has also made a kind of a GUI from uh, PowerShell uh, checking that you have all the prerequisites when you are going to uh, install System Center Configuration Manager. Some documentation jewels. After yesterday being at Mr. Brighton's uh, session, I, I had some headache. <laughs> or if, if it was after the beers, I don't know. Of course, I have to mention his, as it was released yesterday. For those who missed his session, this is uh, really cool stuff. It's a, a framework for making documentation. Uh, it's really nice. You should uh, definitely watch his session when it comes up on the recording. And if you want to go into the GitHub of his, he has a, a like 
29 examples of running it so you can get an, an, an idea how it works and it doesn't need Excel, it doesn't need uh, Word and uh, whatever on the, the machine that what, when you're harvesting. Uh, so it kind of uh, sets the, the new new way of creating those documentation scripts. If you don't have the time, then use those scripts that already exist. And uh, another uh, MVP. Serhat has uh, worked on making a Hyper-V reporting script. So this uh, basically goes through the virtual machines, the host, the clusters, and they're giving information about how your environment uh, is doing right now. And uh, that's also a good way of getting uh, information. If, for instance, you don't have a uh, operations manager or you don't have another kind of monitoring or you just want some uh, basic information after you have set up a system then you can like get the report of everything like what versions of, of uh, and what updates your Hyper-V hosts have. For those of you who have a configuration manager there is a script David O'Brien has together with some other guys created also creating a word report kind of good I have a colleague using this when he is out and, and installing setting up a new configuration manager environment for customers he runs this and, and can hand over a nice decent report for those uh, installations that he have made The same for you, lucky uh, bastards, so I should say, with using <laughs> service manager, anyone daring to uh, lift their hand and say that they are using this service manager. Uh, Steve Buchanan have made also kind of a, a script for reporting this. Uh, also in, uh, I don't think they, that it's, I think it's only a, a HTML. I don't think it's another version. Uh, and uh, going back to Mr. Brighton, uh, I have actually used uh, Carl's script for uh, harvesting in, in Active Directory. I could uh, agree that it takes some time to create those uh, reports, but it's a good uh, uh, word report. Uh, so of course, if someone in this room uh, would like to volunteer to rewrite it with Squibo, that would be lovely. Uh, SQL PowerDoc, have anyone used that one? In an environment uh, like when we are being uh, at uh, customers, large Swedish customers that aren't like large uh, American or US customers it's like oh you have 500 servers uh, that's like large in Sweden uh, so but the point here is that you can go and get information about all servers having a SQL and how it is set up and getting that information if there are some issues on those SQL servers you can run it either on only a single machine or you can like uh, check uh, on an active directory and get the computers. It gives a report about information about how the SQL is, uh, if it's healthy and also about the Windows machine that if, if that's healthy and, and working. So uh, my colleague uh, our only DBA at the company, she's using this uh, quite often to get information about the SQL area. What's the output? Uh, HTML? No, it's using, uh, let's see, I think it's Word. Oh, I have to get back. Uh, I haven't uh, actually run it myself, so. Uh, 
I'll find that. And, and oh, I can find that. Just yeah, you can check the link. I yeah, think it's. Uh, it's just, I think you can uh, choose what uh, kind of uh, versions. Uh, if it's not Word, it's HTML, I think. Uh, going forward with the next <coughs> exchange performance. I would guess that probably most of you are already running Office 365, but for those that cannot do that, this is a, a health check that can report for your uh, environment. If the servers are uh, all over the place uh, with different roles, it can handle that also, so it can check all those different machines. And it uses the exchange sizing and uh, best practice uh, from TechNet. So you have a baseline of what they uh, think that's okay. Modules and add-ons. Posh sec. You might have noticed that Snoover had a an, an, uh, small sticker on his uh, computer. So it's uh, basically a framework for uh, security stuff. Uh, so that definitely should be uh, looked at. Also on GitHub, of course. Uh, then there's the PowerShell community extensions. Basically, uh, community finding that they are missing some different uh, commandlets and making their own. So with the PowerShell version 5, uh, several of them kind of already exist, but uh, they uh, have some good ones if you look through them. Uh, you can find it on the PowerShell gallery actually. Carbon is another one. I found the Carbon uh, when I was trying out the guy's script. Uh, he had uh, posted a, a script that can send and receive files over the PowerShell WinRM. And he was utilizing a commandlet for testing the path from uh, Get Carbon from that uh, from that uh, module. So I was uh, kind of complaining to him and saying, "Oh, it doesn't work on my system. Oh, I missed that I have uh, actually put that there." So that's uh, uh, if you're making modules and and you're making different tools and uh, stuff that you're going to share. Either you need to uh, set that as a requirement and showing what different modules you need or you should watch out if you start importing all those different uh, modules and getting all those uh, commandlets then when you uh, start making your tool you don't maybe think so much okay where does that commandlet come from and okay can I use that or so it's kind of Think a bit before, so you don't have angry friends. Yeah. You can enforce that with, with uh, the require statement of fronting script, right? You can you can make a require statement that you yeah, so You can also uh, uh, put it in your manifest that you have a dependency on another module. Correct. And, yeah. Uh, actually, this works out in the gallery quite fine. And if you have a dependency, it's also in the gallery. It would ah. sign together and it, it would install the other module as well. That was really nice. I haven't it's tried that, but maybe I have already tried it because I had installed some modules and so the dependencies. Yeah, so that's really good in the manifest going in there and then checking that. PowerShell tools for Visual Studio. Not everyone is using uh, IZ or uh, have anyone been into the Visual Studio? At least two, three, four, five. Uh, <coughs> I haven't been there so much either. I've used uh, the steroids and, and that's really good. But uh, Adam Driscoll has made 
the PowerShell tools for Visual Studio now. I think the Microsoft and the PowerShell team has uh, like adopted his stuff and uh, uh, giving their blessing on it. Uh, to get that working and getting it to, into the Visual Studio, we have the Visual Studio here. Then you go into uh, the tools, extensions, and updates. And you can see what's installed and what's online. And then we can go down. Uh, was somewhere in there. Here. So either if you have a Visual Studio 2013 or 2015, you can install this. And then you will get highlighting and you will get like uh, more good functionality being able to take that step away from the ESI. I've been using a, a bit of this and then I've used the ESI and, and I copied like using the snippets and copying stuff into here. So that's kind of using two ways. So I will uh, continue. The time is uh, play from current slide. Probably some of you be, uh, was at the uh, at uh, Free Hicks session yesterday. Uh, for those who who was not, he has made a, a geek module for uh, Isai. So it's an add-on giving you a possibility to build uh, some, uh, to use extra functionality within the ESI. Uh, if you're not using the Tobias uh, steroids, or you could use it together with this, of course. Azure Automation in PowerShell ESI uh, for you being in uh, Yo's session before lunch. You could see this. How many of you have, have used uh, uh, Azure Automation? Like four. Azure Automation is basically an orchestrator in, in uh, Azure. We go into the Microsoft Operations Management Suite. Have you heard about that? It's a suite of tools, including a log search, a automation, and site recovery and security. Going into the automation parts. And if I uh, click here, I will go into the Asia portal where I have the automation account. And today they also released information about how to run a PowerShell script instead of just using the workflows. Here's my automation account. I have a, an account called Hybrid Test. Uh, if you're utilizing this with your Azure subscription, you can get 500 minutes of uh, runtime. And you can uh, basically put run books that either run on Azure stuff or on uh, wherever actually if running in public, where you have public ways of getting stuff. Or you can use something called a hybrid worker. And then you will install the Microsoft Operations Management Suite agent on a server on-premise. That one, uh, when registered, will act as a runbook hybrid worker. And you specify when you start a runbook, if it should be running on Azure or on that hybrid worker. 
that hybrid worker doesn't need any ports into it. You need to have an HTTPS port out of it. So for security reasons that can be like, ooh, you have a way of getting run books started inside an organization based on that that server has access outside into the, uh, the web to internet. That can be both uh, good and bad. So for instance, if you go into a, a, like here, and uh, in my case, I, I have done some different uh, run books, uh, either taking care of VMware stuff on premise, taking care of uh, Hyper-V stuff on premise, or uh, doing stuff in Azure, or I don't know if anyone using Slack, that's a kind of a IRC for uh, new nerds. So if I, uh, for instance, uh, use this uh, update Slack, I get what message I want. Uh, and what channel. Webhook data. I can start a uh, runbook with a webhook instead of using uh, this. So if I have like, for instance, a Visual Studio building process, it can kick off an Azure runbook in the other side. And you can see if I want to uh, run OS, run on Azure or a hybrid worker, uh, so I can choose here. I can have different, if I have one in the US, one in Europe, I can have different hybrid worker groups. And that would be kind of smart to have uh, more than one server on premise for uh, high availability. So kicking off this job. Uh, but uh, the main thing I wanted to show was uh, using the ESI add-on so here when you have started creating your run books you can sign in here and get your run books to be able to edit those in the IZ instead of uh, No, do. No. And you can see down there, it's uh, showing that something is happening. Finishing getting data for hybrid tests. And here are my So now I open a run book that I have downloaded from Azure Automation and I can update this. For instance, that was kind of not so important update, but nevertheless, I save it and then I can update the local it says and I can upload the draft. And now it says in sync and then I can go into the Azure And I can also edit it here. Hopefully. I was supposed to. Something strange with the computer room. Let's see if we can. We all love this uh, new. Uh, Azure portal. Okay, now you can see that it has been updated. So if you had updated stuff or if you're starting creating this workflow and then you wanted to upload it. And as you could see in this uh, uh, tool here, uh, you could also test the draft or you could publish the draft. 
So if I publish it, then it's being published, and then I, if I had like an, an scheduled stuff, I could use it there uh, and start for scheduled stuffing. So play from current. And last of all, the Microsoft Operations Man Manager PS module. So it's some MVPs that have made an, an uh, PowerShell module for harvesting log data from the log insights in the operations management. That's kind of cool also. And uh, summary for you not on uh, GitHub, start working there. And you can clone other guys' stuff and you can uh, upload your own stuff. And engage in your local user groups. Have like workshops and uh, stuff. And uh, the few of you not using Twitter, start using it. And your input on what scripts you use. This was just a small amount of script that I have used and, and 